The small coastal village of Grey Harbor had always been shrouded in mist. It clung to the cliffs and blanketed the streets, but none was thicker than the fog that surrounded the old lighthouse. The beacon at the top hadn't been lit in years, not since the last lantern keeper vanished without a trace. Some say he had gone mad, others believe he had simply wandered off into the sea, but most of the villagers agreed on one thing. No one should go near the lighthouse after dark. Harper, a writer from the city, wasn't one for ghost stories. She had rented a cottage in Grey Harbor to finish her latest book, drawn to the quiet and the isolation. The locals were friendly enough, but they warned her time and again to stay away from the lighthouse. Curiosity, of course, got the better of her. One evening, after a particularly long day of writing, Harper found herself staring out her window at the faint outline of the lighthouse, its shadow barely visible through the swirling fog. The thought of a quick walk to clear her head seemed appealing, and before she knew it, she had grabbed her coat and set out towards the cliffs. The air was crisp, the mist damp against her skin as she made her way along the winding path. The lighthouse loomed closer with each step, its once bright stone now weathered and gray, standing like a sentinel over the sea. Harper paused at the base, staring up at the towering structure. There was something hauntingly beautiful about it, despite the warnings she had heard. Ignoring the chill that crept down her spine, she pushed open the rusted gate and walked toward the entrance. The heavy wooden door was slightly ajar, as if waiting for someone to enter. Harper hesitated only a moment before slipping inside. The air within was thick with the scent of salt and mildew. The narrow staircase spiraled up into the darkness, each step groaning beneath her weight. The walls were lined with old lanterns, their glass cracked and covered in dust, though none of them had been lit in years. Harper couldn't help but feel a strange sense of unease, but she shook it off, chalking it up to the eerie atmosphere. As she climbed higher, the sound of the wind outside grew distant, replaced by a faint, rhythmic noise. It was soft at first, almost imperceptible, but as she reached the top of the staircase, it became clearer, a steady, rhythmic scraping, like metal being dragged across stone. Harper pushed open the door to the lantern room, expecting to find it empty. Instead, she froze. There, standing by the darkened lantern, was a man. His back was to her, his thin frame draped in a long, tattered coat. His head was slightly bowed, and in his hands he held a large, rusted lantern. He was polishing it, the metal scraping against the stone floor with each slow, deliberate movement. Harper's breath caught in her throat. Hello? She called softly though she wasn't sure why she was even speaking at all. Her instincts told her to turn and leave, but something about the man's presence kept her rooted in place. The man stopped polishing the lantern, but he didn't turn to face her. Instead, he spoke in a low, raspy voice. You shouldn't be here. Harper swallowed hard. I didn't mean to intrude. I'm just... I was curious about the lighthouse. The man slowly lifted the lantern, holding it up toward the darkened beacon. It hasn't been lit in years, he said, his voice barely more than a whisper. Not since the last storm. Harper frowned, taking a small step closer. What happened? For a moment, the man was silent. Then he turned, just enough for her to see his profile. His face was gaunt, his skin pale and stretched too tightly over his bones. His eyes, hollow and sunken, glinted in the dim light as he spoke. The sea claimed them, all of them, one by one. Harper's heart raced as the weight of his words sank in. She had heard the stories of shipwrecks and sailors lost to the unforgiving waves, but she hadn't thought much of them. After all, Grey Harbor had been known for its dangerous waters long before the lighthouse went dark. But... Why didn't they relight the lantern? she asked, her voice barely audible. The man turned fully now, and Harper took an involuntary step back. His eyes were wide, 
unblinking and filled with something she couldn't quite place. Fear, perhaps, or something far worse. The keeper never returned, he said, his voice trembling. And the sea, it waits. It waits for the light. A sudden gust of wind rattled the windows of the lantern room, and the fog outside thickened, swirling around the lighthouse like a living thing. Harper's skin prickled with cold as the man took a step toward her, the lantern still clutched in his bony hands. You've woken it, he whispered. The sea, it knows you're here now. Harper backed toward the door, her heart pounding in her chest. I, I don't understand, she stammered, her voice shaking. The man's eyes locked onto hers, and for the first time she saw the depth of the madness in his gaze. It claimed the keeper, he rasped, and it will claim you too, unless... Unless what? He raised the lantern toward her, the glass reflecting the dim light from outside. Unless the light is restored. Before she could respond, the room seemed to shift. The walls creaked, and the floor beneath her feet trembled. A low, deep rumble echoed through the lighthouse like the roar of distant waves crashing against the cliffs. The man's face twisted with fear as he shoved the lantern into her hands. Light it, he commanded, his voice urgent. Light it, or the sea will take you. Harper fumbled with the lantern, her hands shaking. The wind outside howled, rattling the entire structure as the fog pressed in closer, wrapping around the lighthouse like a noose. She found the small tinderbox inside the lantern and struck a match, her breath catching as the flame flickered to life. But just as she touched the flame to the lantern's wick, the wind howled again, snuffing out the light in an instant. The man let out a low, guttural moan, his face contorting in despair. It's too late, he whispered. It's already here. Harper turned to the window her blood running cold as she saw something moving in the fog. A shape, enormous and dark, shifting through the mist like a great shadow. The sea itself seemed to rise up, its waves crashing against the base of the lighthouse, sending tremors through the floor beneath her. And then she heard it, a voice, deep and ancient, calling to her from the depths of the fog. Come to me. The walls groaned and the windows shattered as the sea surged closer, flooding the room with icy water. Harper screamed, dropping the lantern as she tried to run, but the force of the water knocked her off her feet, dragging her toward the open window. As the freezing water pulled her under, she caught one last glimpse of the man standing by the darkened beacon, his face twisted in a strange, sorrowful smile. The sea had claimed her. The next morning, the lighthouse stood silent once more, its windows shattered, its wall damp with sea spray. The fog had lifted, but Harper was never found. The villagers knew better than to search. They had lost too many to the sea already. And at night, when the mist rolls in and the wind howls, they say you can still see the lantern's faint glow at the top of the lighthouse, a light that calls out to anyone foolish enough to venture too close.